So you spend a couple of years in London and then you come back to Seattle and then you buy the whole company coffee on your last day, February, 2018. How, how did you think about the timing for leaving Facebook after, you know, you'd built up so much of the company? Yeah. Great question. So when, so I spent five years building up Facebook London, and then we decided as a family to come back to the U S and honestly, we were very close to deciding to just convert to become British citizens after living there and working there five years, you have the right to convert into essentially the British version of a green card, you know, mm -hmm. and you can stay and then eventually become a citizen. We were very seriously considering that our kids were beginning to get toward middle school. And our ideal was not to move them once they begin middle school to just settle down in a place. We were very close and it was an even call when we decided to come back to Seattle, I had already told my new manager in Seattle to please only take me on his team if he's happy with me leaving the team within about a year. Because I knew that I was probably going to want to move on to something else within a year. So I deliberately picked a job where the manager was well aware a year beforehand that I would actually be leaving. Right. Um, and I wanted to leave after that time, primarily because I feel like I just do better in smaller environments. By the time I came back to Facebook Seattle, Facebook Seattle alone was more than 2000 engineers. You know, yeah. when I first joined Facebook Seattle, not only was I the second person hired, Facebook globally was 500 engineers. Right. So if you can imagine me returning to an office that was more like five times that size, and that office wasn't even considered a large Facebook office, you know, mm -hmm. um, the company was just completely different from how it was. Specifically for me, I'm a generalist, not a specialist. And so generalists are super useful when a company is very small, but as a company gets larger, specialists, especially as individual contributors are the more valuable and the more easy to retain. And so mm -hmm. I felt like my generalist skills weren't as useful to Facebook as a larger company as they was when it was small. And you were a manager for most of your duration in London, right? And then you, did you transition back to an IC role? When did that happen? Yeah. Great question. Out of my five years in London, I managed people probably two years. So I had started as the site director with an agreement with Shrep, the CTO of Facebook back then, that I would be an individual contributor. I asked him, I basically told him I would be thrilled to be the site director because I have a lot of passion behind how to build offices and the theory behind building culture, right? But I also said I would prefer to be an individual contributor if possible. And he was quite amenable to that. So for my first two years in London, I was an individual contributor, site director, leading the site as a whole. Uh, but I managed one or two teams in London and then became an individual contributor again when the Oculus team started in London. So I coded on Oculus and then on Workplace as an individual contributor. Um, so I flopped back and forth between them. I think ultimately it comes down to this. I think I am a better manager than coder, but I enjoy coding more than managing. And so in my career, mm, I've just flopped a lot between these two because the thing that I enjoy a whole lot, which is coding, I am honestly probably just average or slightly above average on it. Mm, okay. Yeah. It's interesting because it sounds like at a company as large as Facebook, 2017, 2018, um, the generalist IC archetype potentially has less opportunity for advancement compared to a specialist. And that's what you described yourself as a generalist, but at the same time, you didn't really have that passion or depth in management that you wanted. And so is that, right. that probably contributed to why you wanted to, you know, go on to other things? Right. Yeah. Because I felt like if I wanted to continue to be useful to the company in anywhere close to my full potential, right. I would want mm -hmm. to be leading large teams, you yeah. know, is, it's probably hell. Cause I could be a very, like as an individual contributor, when I joined, like I fully earned my keep as a senior in, in individual contributor, because for instance, I led product reviews with Zuck, you know? So I basically was the most experienced person. So I, I was more experienced than the product manager, more experienced than the designer. So I was the one leading the meetings with Zuck. I was the one negotiating with outside third, third parties to test the video calling product, right? Mm -hmm. Working with Skype on the contract between Skype and Facebook and things. Yeah. And that is something that a general a generalist individual contributor can do when a company is small. I guarantee you today, if Facebook was doing a collaboration with Skype, there's no way they would send me in to talk about the contract. There's no way they would have me hire the third parties. Like there's just no way. Right. So I feel like my unique value contribution was much greater as an individual contributor when the company was small enough that my generalist scope could be useful. 